In this video, I want to explain how to visualize the magnetic field in COMSOL. We'll do this using four different forms of plots. Surface plots to show the magnitude of the magnetic field. Arrow plots to show the field vectors. Streamline plots to show the field direction. And contour plots to illustrate the magnetic field lines. These four types are what I'll demonstrate. Although I'm using a 2D axis symmetric model, I'll expand explanation later in the video to include 2D Cartesian and also 3D geometries, so be sure to watch until the end. Let's start. My name is Mohammad. I'm a high voltage engineering expert and this is the High Voltage Academy channel. I'm recording this video based on your requests in the comments. At first, I wanted to post it as a short, but there's way too much to cover for that format. You can visualize the magnetic field in any console model that involves magnetic simulations. For this demo, I'm using one of our previous models, the same one we used for mutual inductance calculation. The geometry includes two coils, the inner coil is energized and the outer coil has no current, which helps us clearly visualize the magnetic field. Step 1 is creating the plot group. To get us started, Go to the results node, right click and choose add 2D plot group. I've already added four different plot groups so we can visualize the magnetic field in four ways. Make sure that under data set you're selecting the study results and clear the selection if it's set to a subdomain. We want to visualize the magnetic field throughout the entire domain. Okay, let's start with the surface plot. Right click the first 2D plot group and choose surface. If you're using the magnetic field interface, you will see that the expression is automatically set to mf.normb, which represents the magnitude of the magnetic flux density. You can also find this manually by navigating to magnetic field, your magnetic, and this is magnetic flux density norm. When you click on plot, you will see a color map that shows the magnetic field strength over the surface of your domain. At this point, I recommend experimenting with color scale and other settings to get a better feel for the results. Now let's go to the second plot group, right click and select arrow surface. The R and Z components will automatically be set to mf.br and mf.bz which are the radial and axial components of the magnetic flux density in axis symmetric coordinates. To verify or change these you go to the components and under the magnetic fields here you have the magnetic and this is the magnetic flux density. Click on plot and you'll see arrow indicating the direction of the magnetic field. To make this more visually effective I recommend switching from arrows to cones. You can do this under the arrow print section. You can also change the color here. I set it to blue and adjust the arrow length. If you choose normalized, you will see only the direction of the magnetic field. If you use proportional, the arrow length will reflect the magnitude of the field linearly. And if you set the logarithmic, the arrow length will reflect the magnitude, but the relationship is logarithmic. The logarithmic scale often works better when field values vary significantly across space, for example, near and far from the coil. You can also increase the density of cones by modifying the arrow positioning. For example, I set it instead of 15 to 30 and 30 and you can see much more cones in your plot. Also, if you want to visualize a larger area, you can increase the plot range. For example, I increase it to 500 and you can see that the cones are also in other parts. Maybe I set it to 1000. And also under coloring style, there is another option, scale factor. Adjusting it helps you control the visual size of the cones without affecting the physical meaning. If I make it larger, you can see larger cones over our surface. You can also add color indicating the magnitude. For that, just right click on the arrow surface and add color expression. 
This is usually set to mf.normme by default. Now the color shows the magnitude and the cone shapes show the direction of the field. Let's move on to a streamline plot which shows the path of magnetic field lines. Right click on next plot group and choose here streamline. Here you need to select the boundaries where the streamline should be generated. I usually choose all boundaries. Again, the R and Z components are automatically set to mf.br and mf.bz. Click on plot and you will see several streamlines and these can be customized using several options. Under streamline positioning, you can set the positioning instead of selected boundaries on starting point control. Let's see what happens. That's much better. You can also adjust the number of streamlines. For example, I set it to 40. There is also another option here. It is the magnitude control, which uses more streamlines where the magnetic field is higher. Let's plot that. And you will also see options for minimum and maximum distances between lines. I decrease this one a little bit and you can see denser lines here. You can also show the direction arrows along the streamline. For that, just come down and under the point style, under the type, says, for example, the arrow. And you can see some arrows pointing the direction of the field. Although you will see arrowheads, their size doesn't reflect the magnetic field strength. It just shows direction. You can also change that under the arrow length. You can set it to logarithmic and the arrows are bigger where the magnetic field is higher. I prefer it to be under normalize. But we can also add a color expression to reflect the magnetic field norm. Just right click on streamline and pick color expression. It is also normally set to magnetic field norm. And now you can see somehow the magnetic field lines, their directions, and also the color reflects the magnetic flux density or magnetic field magnitude. Finally, let's visualize two magnetic flux lines using contour plots. Right click here and choose contour. Set the expression to R multiplied by mf dot A. Phi. Here's why. In cylindrical coordinates, mf dot a phi is the azimuthal component of the magnetic vector potential and r multiplied by a phi gives us the magnetic flux surfaces. By plotting contours of r multiplied by mf dot a phi, we are effectively visualizing lines of constant magnetic flux, which are magnetic field lines. Just click on plot and you can see the magnetic field lines. You can adjust the number of levels to increase the density of the lines. For example, I change it to 40 and you can see denser field lines here. You can also change the color table options. I won't go into color customization here, but you're welcome to explore that yourself. So far, everything we've done was for 2D axisymmetric geometry. You can see four different ways that we have used and also the expressions that we should use for visualizing the magnetic field. To apply this to other geometries, including 2D and 3D, for the field magnitude, the expression doesn't change. We use mf.normme in three of them. For the field vectors and also the field directions, the radial and axial components of the magnetic field should be changed to the x and y components and in 3 3D, X, Y, and Z components. However, for magnetic flux lines, in 2D axis symmetric, we have used R multiplied by MF dot A phi. In the 2D Cartesian, you only need to use the expression MF dot A Z. And in the 3D, you cannot use the contours simply, but you can change it with a streamline and use the MF dot B. Using this table and this logic, you can easily visualize magnetic fields in any geometry. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.